I'm a VC, so I'm going to say a bunch of stuff that everybody already knows. And, uh, you know, so, so if you haven't noticed, there's a changing landscape in terms of how companies are being built. And entrepreneurs are really innovating not only in the products and services they deliver, but also in terms of how these companies are built. On the other side of the equation, you have where I sit, and the biggest innovation in VC over the past 10 or 20 years is moving carried interest from 20% to 25%. <laughs> and so you have this fundamental sort of disconnect between the historic sort of way a VC fund is run, where you had $50 million per partner per fund, this means three investments per partner per year, you know, and it's just fundamentally not lean. And, and this creates this, this disconnect when, when you fund an idea, and I think it's most painful when that idea doesn't work. Because when an idea doesn't work, the entrepreneur is taught to iterate and pivot, and the VC is taught to write another check. And then if that doesn't work, you fire the CEO and write another check. So, so ultimately what it amounts to is VC is trying to buy product market fit, which across the board is the one thing that you really, you cannot buy this, right? Like you can do bigger experiments, you can do more experiments, but you can't change the answers that come back from the market. So while VCs are trying to figure out, you know, how to fit in this lean startup thing, you guys keep making it worse and worse and worse by building bigger and bigger companies for less and less and less, right? So you're, you're building on modern languages, cloud services, distribution is no problem, right? And so the VC response is that everyone becomes an angel. Right? So you have these big, fat, hairy guys running around you know, with money in every startup. And, and the reality is the, the logic of this type of investment is fundamentally flawed, right? And, and it's, you know, the logic is you have infinite potential users because guess what, you do Facebook Connect, and you have some projected amount of money per user, and so ultimately, this could be huge, and if it's gonna be huge, it's gonna be huge really fast, but nobody knows which one's gonna be huge. And so, as an industry, people started valuing option value, right, and started building portfolios of companies, of, of options, rather than building businesses, rather than focusing on building businesses. And so, I know Pivot has a bad name, but it's me, not you. Right, it's me. And, and this has become, truthfully, the, the subprime of, of the startup world. <laughs> and, and, and so, you know, but I'm a believer that no matter how much VCs try to fuck it up, the lean startup is gonna work. And, and I have hope that as you guys continue to bring vision holders closer and closer and closer to consumers, iterate faster, you know, build off of platforms and, and recognize the value of leverage of these platforms, you know, some of the, the guys that are listening are gonna to start to catch up on the other side of the table. And you're starting to see this, right? You see this with AngelList, you see it with Y Combinator, with Techstars, you see it across kind of the top tier VCs. They're building platforms, and these platforms are designed to support communities of scale. Um, and and this, this represents, for me anyway, represents a convergence of thought around how companies should be built. And this, this idea that really leverage of existing pieces is the most important thing and figuring out how, as a service provider to entrepreneurs, to help drive creativity, to help make the process more efficient, to help make sure that you guys never have to do something again that's already been done before, right? That, that's the goal. And so when you recognize that the creativity is gonna capture the maximum value, I think what happens is on both sides of the table, you return to a craft sort of business, right? And you, you return to passion, you return to building things that consumers love, these experiences that they need to have. And, and that's lucky because in a world where anything can be built, the thing that has to be built is brand. That's the only way you're gonna defend your position in the market is if your consumer loves you and when someone else builds the exact same thing, they don't switch, right? So, so brand is your source of defensibility. The same for VCs. You know, our job is to accelerate startups from inflection point to inflection point. And if we approach this by trying to build platforms that service the entrepreneur, you know, the reality is it's very different depending on which inflection point to which inflection point you want to get to. So we need to refocus and recognize that it's different to go from zero to four when you're in employees where you're kind of dating your customer to four to 40 where you've really found that love and you're starting to grow and hit that hyper growth and then 40 plus where you're trying to live happily ever after. Those require different amounts of funding and different resources. And so with that recognition, the industry I think can return to sort of this the basics of customer development and appropriately fund, you know, discovery versus validation versus creation versus building and, and have alignment with capital and with entrepreneurs. And ultimately, this hyper-efficient construction of brands that have a potential after a couple of pivots to emerge as category killers is what I'm looking for.